the order has been released or an operation has been released, we can start working on it. So the first thing to do, start working on it, of course, would be to get the materials. Okay. So that's what we are talking about here. Goods issue posting uh, for an order. Okay. So what will happen is, the first thing that could happen is that you might have had a material reservation for this. Right at this point, what you will say is, okay, I remove the reservation because I got the material. Right, so you you had a reservation for ten units. You collected it, so that reservation has to be cancelled. It's not there. I got my ten units, but of course, stock is down by ten units, so you've got that. Then here, uh, you will have to update the stock for from whatever storage location the stock has been withdrawn. So that is done, uh, and then uh, you can update the order with the actual cost because some material has been allocated now to the order. So the order has consumed that cost, so that can be done. So you're doing those kinds of things, okay? Up, uh, up evaluation and updation of order with actual costs. Oops. That is done here. Of course, a goods issue slip and various documents are printed. Material document, accounting document, of course, those two are needed because a material movement took place. You took out material from stock. And a controlling document because this has cost accounting implications, right? So we said we're going to update the uh, order with the actual cost so obviously there's a cost accounting implication so controlling document would also be produced and then of course there are account updations which take place financial accounting implications for the goods issue okay it's normal um, and then uh, account determination for which accounts to be uh, updated right stock account consumption accounts and so on and then uh, other statistics of stock consumption okay so those are all the different results of uh, impacts, you would say, of a goods issue for production. Okay. Uh, one thing is, we cannot assume that, uh, uh, you know, it's possible. Okay. You know, the stock account and consumption account, um, under some conditions, uh, I guess this consumption account. So I don't think both the accounts will be updated in a single transaction, right? So we'll have to think about it. under what conditions it's the stock account and under what conditions it's the consumption account. But if the consumption account is an expense account and the stock account is an asset, asset account. Oh yeah, that's true. Right. You're taking from stock and consuming for the order. Okay. So it's nothing. Both of those accounts are updated actually, right? Because you're consuming from stock at this point. You know, when you bought, when you bought the material, you purchased it for stock. You're now using it. That's what this is. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So here we are talking about confirmation. So the materials were issued, and the work was done. Using the materials, the production work was done. Okay. So here we are talking about what are the various options you have for entering confirmations. Remember, when we said confirmations. We are saying, what did we do, right? How much did we produce? Most important uh, output of confirmation would be how much did we produce, etc. Okay. So you've got two uh, uh, broad options for confirmations. One is order related. In other words, what we are saying there is, you wait for the entire order to be complete, and then you enter the confirmations, right? We say, okay, we produced 50 finished goods as a result of this. Okay. Or you might enter confirmations based on individual operations. Right at the end of every single operation, you might enter confirmation. Say so operation 10 is complete, it produced uh, so many items. You know, and then afterwards operation 20 is complete, so many items passed and so on. See, at, at the end of every operation, it's possible that some of the items may pass quality check or fail quality check. Right? So you start with 50, you may not always carry that 50 right through. So at the end of individual operations, some, some of them might get lost. Okay. So that's the idea here. So you could enter order based or operation based. Now within operation based, there are several options for how to enter confirmation. So for example, for within an individual operation, you might have finer levels of confirmation. For example, start setup, finish setup, start processing, finish processing. Right. In other words, you're not just saying I completed operation 10. You're giving finer details, saying I just started the setup for operation 10. I just completed the setup for operation 10. Okay, and so on. So time event based confirmations within 
operation based confirmation is also possible and then there are other kinds of things you know so the mechanisms by which you would perform the confirmation by entering a time ticket or a confirmation slip and so on the different you know physical ways by which you may actually give that information to the system right? and then there are other options here collective or quick entry confirmation which is you might be doing operation based confirmation but you may not do it at the end of every single operation you may complete the operation for example and uh, all the maybe uh, you know two, two, three or four operations and then go back and enter confirmations for all of them together okay that's possible the system allows that or milestone confirmation right which is you specify certain time points time events maybe as milestones right in other words you may say for operation 10 just enter one confirmation at the end of the operation right for 20 enter it right or you may say that completion of operation 20 is a milestone okay so you don't have to enter confirmation for 10 but then you don't wait till the end of the order to enter the confirmation milestone enter the confirmation right so you can set up milestones and say uh, you know the end of this operation is a milestone or completion of setup for this operation is a milestone so you set up the milestones and then allow for confirmation entry at each milestone okay now clearly what you do depends upon what your organization requires okay there's no hard and fast rule that says you must have event based confirmation or whatever right your process may be simple so you may just enter order based confirmation right or you might want to track at the level of operation it depends on what makes sense in your context okay so you've got all of these uh, but by and large the two main things are order related and operation related right which is end of the whole order or end of each operation the other things are just uh, additional embellishments okay so effects of order confirmation okay you might have uh, you know goods receipt it could be automated right it's it's not necessarily have to be automated but it's there's a possibility that the moment you enter confirmation you said i finished producing 50 units right so it, system can say okay i've received goods for 50 units right so that could be automated if your processes if your manual processes on the floor are set up in such a way that you will finish the operation go and give it uh, you know put it in a certain area and then enter the confirmation then you know that this is already in the receiving area of the warehouse so you say okay we've got 50 more units so that could be automated and then here we said that remember earlier we were talking about how goods issue could also be automated the back flush thing right that is uh, you didn't enter goods issue as the goods were actually being used up but when I said I finished producing so much the system can infer that you used so much of certain material okay so that again is something that makes the process easier smoother you don't have to enter those things the system can just infer and say you entered uh, you did you took the material okay so when you enter the order confirmation it's possible that uh, goods receipt could be automated or manual it's possible that there could be some automatic goods issue based on back flush that could take place uh, then of course the order has to be updated with the status saying it's now complete okay and then uh, uh, quantity and cost all of those things can now be updated on the order right remember uh, we said that if you're using cost object uh, order related cost object controlling then the the production order is the one that is accumulating all of these costs right so this updation is really going to go and update that okay the, the order got completed and uh, the goods were received uh, I mean the confirmation was entered so now we can add the cost of this order if we are tracking that and then some other statistical information in logistic information systems inside the business warehouse wherever information is being tracked that is going and then confirmation can also send data to HR for you know payroll and other purposes you know people worked for certain time so labor got consumed so that information can go there uh, and then of course you can reduce capacity requirements right because now earlier you had calculated capacity requirements as capacity being needed for this order we were producing 500 units so we need this capacity now it's gone we produced those 500 units okay that's kind of like reducing the material reservations same idea okay so these are all the effects of confirming an order on the system okay 
Uh, no, these two are of course optional steps in the sense that they may not be or this may not be automated and this may not be even in place. No back you may not be using backflash. Okay, so this is just uh, I spoke about this already. <coughs> okay, and again another point is uh, if scrap or rework is confirmed, then quality notifications can be generated also. Right? So along with confirmation, you're going to say we produced 48 good pieces and we produced two defectives. Okay? Now that has implications for the quality system. So that's the quality notification that can be generated as well. Okay. So now um, the goods receipt. Okay, now remember in the previous slide we saw that goods receipt could be automatic. Okay, so we are looking now at the details of the goods receipts step. So as a result of producing finished goods, you now have more finished goods. You need to receive that into your warehouse. So that's what you're seeing here. Uh, now in your slide, I think this says reservation. The slide in the book, it says reservation. I think that's a mistake. It should be order. The order gets updated. Okay, so, uh, so the order gets updated with goods receipt. And then, of course, once uh, there is something, you know, there is some goods now to be put away in the warehouse, right? So you've got that. It's a, uh, a transfer request for the warehouse, and the warehouse management operator. Yeah. Finished goods. Finished goods have now been finished. They, you know, production has produced it. They brought it in. Now they've got to be put away in the finished goods uh, stock, right? Finished goods warehouse. So that's the transfer request for the warehouse now to. Uh, take care of it. Uh, of course, a goods receipt slip is printed and any other form of confirmation output and the same three documents as before. A material document, accounting document and a controlling document. And uh, the accounts updated now are stock account and plant activity. right? Because plant activity is the one that produced all of these items we are putting away in stock. So those two accounts would get updated. Okay, And then stock quantity obviously would get updated as well you're keeping track of inventories okay so those are all the effects of uh, goods receipt once again this goods receipt is movement 101 receiving goods into stock okay so here we are looking at the impact of uh, how the order is treated okay the settlement uh, process of the order okay. so here we are looking at the process for order related cost object controlling Right, that is, uh, if, you went, if you remember the production order slide that we saw, we said that it will have two things based on, you know, it will have a settlement rule and it will have cost information provided we are doing order related cost object controlling. Right, in other words, are we tracking costs for individual orders or not? Right, if we, here we are assuming that we are doing that. Okay, so if you are doing that, then you have got uh, all of these, the order as the order got executed, it was consuming all these costs, right? Because when it was executed, it, it, it took material, uh, it consumed production capacity, it consumed some overhead costs, right? So all of those the order was accumulating. So this is the total production cost on the order, okay? And that of course was determined at the time of confirmation, okay? So now when goods are received, we have to account for that. So we've got, uh, we credit the production order because now we're allocating costs from the production order to other things, right? Well, work in progress and so on, right? So we uh, credit the production order and here they're just showing you the calculations of what they do with the material stock account and the plant activity account. Remember we said those two accounts would be, uh, would be updated as a result of this production, right? So we're saying the material stock account would be updated by the quantity times standard price times the valuation variant, which is the, the, the price at which you value what was just produced. So, and then similarly, plant activity is going to be uh, you know, debited by the same amount. Okay, So that's what you're going on here. Uh, and all the settlement will be based on the settlement profile that has been set up. In other words, you would say this is how the costs of this order are going to be settled. So that is the settlement profile. Uh, and based on the settlement profile, you do the actual Okay, so that's really what's going on in uh, order related cost object controlling. Right? In other words, what we are saying here is 
we are accumulating the costs of the order and then settling the order okay the other option is product related cost object controlling in which case these processes won't be there okay it makes sense when does order related cost object controlling make sense in other words what we are saying is under what conditions would you want to uh, do cost object controlling for individual production orders okay and some of the things could be if you are working in a flexible production environment right then uh, the costs for various orders might be drastically different right it's a very flexible production environment you're producing all kinds of different things not just a stream of the same set of products right in which case you want to be quite accurate about how you cost your uh, products so then obviously order related cost object controlling makes sense in that context right on the other hand if you just got two products and you're just churning them out by the thousand and you may do many production orders here you know today for 100 tomorrow for 300 but you may not actually want to cost each of them separately okay that's the idea here whereas if it's flexible and every order costs different then you may do that okay or if you have a very flexible product range same scenario uh, then you might want to be much more accurate in how you do the costing and of course if you want to do cost manage of management of individual lots of production for whatever reason which of course implies that you're saying that there is scope for the cost to vary quite a lot between lots so now once that scope is there you want to actually see what happened okay so if you want to do this then you want to do order related coc of course if you have to do cost management for each order for whatever reason maybe you know a particular customer has placed an order they want something to be made and you want to charge them exactly what happened for their production then you want to track obviously all the costs for that particular order okay or if you have a scenario where the setup costs are very very high then that will play a big role uh, i should also add setup costs are high and perhaps very variable right then that could play a big role in terms of how uh, each order comes out in cost so that could be a possibility uh, and finally if you're doing uh, what they call is manufacture of co-products right in other words uh, your your manufacturing process simultaneously is producing multiple products okay in which that is what we are effectively saying is that there's a lot of sharing of cost between products okay they're tied together pretty closely then you might want to uh, you know tease apart the costs of each of these orders so you may want to do order related okay so order related cost object controlling just to summarize is when you're trying to track the costs of a specific production order but that may not always be needed so what we are talking about here is under what conditions does that make sense when would we do that when these situations arise Okay, and here we are just talking about period in closing, about how this affects uh, financial accounting. Right, it affects financial accounting because uh, it affects the cost of production, it affects the uh, you know the, the final uh, cost of goods sold and things like that, and it affects cost accounting. So that's why you've got an effect on uh, the company code and uh, profit centers and other financial statements perhaps business areas as well here and on this side the cost accounting implication is you know again for the company and for the profitability segment as well yeah why, why are revenues listed oh uh, revenues here i said why are they listed you haven't sold anything no it's part of the period end closing right this is period end closing so you would have sold something this is not just the end of manufacturing right this is all the activities that happen during period in closing okay so various postings to financial and management accounting happen so you're assuming you sold all the product no you sold something you know by the end of the period you know what you sold okay you have that information okay so that's uh, and again here we are talking about various information systems for manufacturing execution right so you've got um, uh, order information system where you can go and track all the orders and look at uh, things like that so the basis for each of the information systems it's obvious that order information system is going to be based on orders 
uh, then multi-level order view overview for sales orders. Okay, uh, then you know missing parts information system. For example, uh, we saw right when we did availability check, we were able to see the missing parts. So you've got that information, and then various kinds of controlling reports. Um, and then uh, you know we saw earlier that one of the slides that this posts information to the business warehouse. Right? So using the business warehouse, you can generate all kinds of reports. We'll be seeing that. And then production information system is part of the logistics information system. Okay. In fact, when we saw the slide for logistics information system, this was not shown. Uh, PPIS, I'm not sure if it was shown, but it is part of the overall logistics information system. Okay. So that's... Um, that's the aspect of production that we'll be covering in this course. Okay, uh, so let's do one thing. We're close to 11 o'clock. Um, in the, on Blackboard, I've posted questions. Let's see if I've actually posted them. I've posted questions for, review questions for lifecycle data management. Okay, it's not, uh, it's on the main thing. Okay, it's it's here. Oops. Okay, I'll post them right now. Okay, I posted the review questions for lifecycle data management. It's not as big as uh, some of the other ones, some 20 odd questions. So take some, take about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, do those things, then we'll discuss it and then break for lunch. <laughs>